Right, 17 February 2020, and I'm here with Polat spokesman, Mr. Kalipani Pugen. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Pugen. Yes. Pollard. Yeah. Has ran into problems. Okay. From what the media is reporting. Is this correct? Uh, I'm not sure which article really you are referring to. But if, if you check throughout the media, in the last three weeks or so, we've been receiving serious positive coverage. Okay, serious, L serious. let's go to the one Let me say, after, after our election, you know, yes. as the communications team, no, we've done extremely well. Done extremely well. We've been on ZFM, we've been on almost all the major uh, print media, and yeah, I'm receiving really, really good coverage. So, okay, yeah. let's go to the article regarding Bulawayo. Okay. You were in Bulawayo? Yes. Where some committees were meeting? Yeah. Did Dr. Tokuzani Kupe storm out of that meeting? There is no truth into that. Dr. Kupe didn't storm out. You need to appreciate that um, that meeting was uh, expected to last until at least one o'clock. Um, it went up, I think, until up to about half past seven or just after that. So her schedule did not allow her to be there the whole day. So I think that was around about past three or, or so she had to leave the meeting. And um, she passed by, 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 by me before, before she left. And I, I was rushing up to set up the press conference because we had to cut that plenary of the press conference so that um, the media can then go go and uh, and write its story so and you, you'll be interested to know that even as she was leaving she passed the media because the media was seated um, almost at the exit point and uh, no there, there's nothing like storming out okay so she, didn't she left give, she uh, left the media. she didn't talk to the media not during the the press because she was no longer there yeah but uh before before the press because there was a time when the media interacted uh, with the different uh, members of the plenary uh, she did um, she did interact but anyway i understand why you are this curious because there are those uh, mischievous reports that were done supposedly by somebody in that meeting let me maybe try and deal with them one by one just just to respect your your viewers and uh, and even you thank you for affording us this time there's a claim there that says um because uh, you, you you spoke about it even offline there's a claim there that says dr Kope created a book which is full of her pictures right i mean yeah. i mean the, the book in question you have a copy of the book yes we have gone through the book which you have said it's a very good book yeah. you're not the only one by the way we get reviews international players big people they all are appreciative of the hard work that went in there. It was not done by Dr. Kupe on. I think it was six of us that put our input there. That's a 48-page book, right? And I want to deal with this claim that says the book is full of her pictures. So there are 48 pages in that book. And that's not a, a kindergarten book. That, that, that's that's heavy content book. So there are no. It's, it's not a picture book. Out of 48 pages, there is a cover page, right? The cover page has a picture there of Pollard principles. Dr. Kupi, you can't see her. Okay. Can't see her because her face is covered. So she, she's not there in reality because you can't say this one is Dr. Kupi unless you know, like me, what she was wearing on the day. So on the, so, so on the cover page, she's not there. You know, she, she, she's not there. So you move from, from the cover page, you go to page four. In page four, you'll find the core convenience. Dr. Kupi is not there. Is the core conveners on page four, right? On the forward. You go to page 10. At page 10, there are six people there. And these are the people who contributed in putting up this material together. So Dr. Kope will be one of them because this is her vision, by the way. This was her vision. So our faces are there. You'll find my face there. You'll find uh, Dr. Mukaza's face there. So it's about six of us. So you can't then, out of six people, uh, conveniently not see the other five and claim that uh, it's uh, Dr. Kupe's picture. Then from page four, you go rather to from page 10, you go to page 33. Page 33, you will find a picture of us meeting the EU ambassador. Okay. There's another six people there. Yeah. <laughs> so it will be Dr. Kupe and her all international re uh, relations and re-engagement team. And myself, of course, as the spokesperson. 
that's another six people there. You can't then claim that uh, that's Dr. Picture. Then you go Dr. Cooper's picture. You go to page 37. Page 37, it's really the almost the, you know, like a big entourage of, of Poland with all the committee chairpersons there. We also, almost all, they're not all, but almost all. You then also had um, the International Relations and Re-Engagement Team because they were busy with some diplomatic work there. So they also came to join us. And I was there because all these pictures are happening. I'm, I'm involved really in them in the, because of my position. So I get this picture posted with so many people there. So you, you, you can't claim that that's Dr. Kope's picture. You go to page 39. Page 39, I think it's six of us there again, the International Relations and Re-Engagement Team with the UK Ambassador and, uh, and, 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 and of course myself. And that brings us six. So that claim, you can see that it's malicious. It's got no basis in fact, in reality. Uh, really, it's, uh, it's just a malicious person coming up with a useless claim. So, okay. so Dr. Kupe was not told to slow down. <clears throat> I do not know, right? But let's just say she was told to slow down. I mean, slow down on what? Slow down on re-engagement. Okay, yes. Why, why is she going to meet the ambassador? What is the purpose? No, but you, you are missing the point. Now when you're saying Dr. Kupe, why is she, why is she? This is not a, 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 a one man's work. This is the work of the, of the subcommittee on international relations and re-engagement. Now, from the moment this committee was put up, I'm able to give more details because I was nominated to be the rapporteur of that committee. And I passed it because I knew that I'm, I'm going to be part of the communications uh, subcommittee. So I passed it and, and, and I nominated, excuse me, rather uh, President Gwanele Slabangani of ZRP, his part. So I, I have details of how what happened in this committee because I was part of it, I was there. So they get elected. After the election, they come up with a work plan. A work plan is a program of what they are going to do for the first court. That work plan was put before everyone who was there, and it was approved. I posted that work plan after it was approved to the group of uh, the, like the larger committee of international relations and re-engagement. I posted that work plan. So if you are going to say to a work plan that has been approved and adopted, you then turn back and say to someone, slow down, slow down on what? Okay, let's look at the governance structures because most people don't understand. Yeah. Tell me about the governance structure of Poland. Yeah. What is the top, the biggest, highest committee in Poland? Well, it will be the plenary. Uh, it will be the executive plenary. Okay, well, this is where all the presidential candidates sit. Yes. Okay, what is its role? Okay, you are correct when you're saying all the presidential candidates sit, but yes. technically it's not all the presidential candidates because you will know that in some instances, take for example court, uh, Mangoma is resigned from politics, so you'll find that there is a proxy. So, so the person there is not necessarily even the same thing. I think what's the Rainbow Coalition, yes. right? I, I can, man, I, I think Zip also. So, you, you, you will have some proxies of presidential candidates sitting there, but they do constitute part of the executive planner. Okay, yeah. So, this is the committee that makes decisions, yeah. It's the executive planner, okay, yeah. They are the ones that set up the subcommittees. Yes. How many subcommittees do we have? You have uh, the subcommittee on national building and healing. Okay. You have the subcommittee on governance and legislative agenda. You have the subcommittee on the economy. You also have the subcommittee on uh, international relations and re-engagement. Then you have the subcommittee on publicity, communications, and information. Then you have the subcommittee on um, monitoring and evaluation. Right, so the six committees. Yes. And in these six committees, yeah. yourself, you sit in the one for communications. Yes. You sit in the one for international engagement. No, I don't, I don't sit in that committee, mm -hmm. like I'm saying. Uh, when the, because what happened is on the 9th, on the 9th of January. Yes. You had three committees sitting, right? But maybe just to make you understand what would happen is um, once we knew that we we're going to set up committees, so we then said to each party, which is a member of Poland, please recommend or forward 
uh, names of people that will sit in this committee. Okay. Right. So that is why you find that when I was nominated to be the rapporteur for international relations and, and, and re-engagement subcommittee, I turned down that uh, a nomination because I knew that my party had forwarded my name into the communication subcommittee. But you were at the United States Embassy? Yes. With the Committee for International Relations? Yes. How did that happen? Yeah, because I'm the spokesperson for Poland. So basically, I would have to communicate Poland. Okay. Yeah, so ideally, as far as this is possible, wherever there is Poland work, I think, I, th I thought this was obvious. <laughs> is this not why there is complaints among other Poland members that you are dominating as MDC? No, it it will be it will be a baseless complaint. Uh, if you're saying people are dominating, you are. My understanding will be people who come and impose themselves. But I think I've just told you how 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 officials of of Poland uh, get to be. Uh, so you find that there are about seventeen parties, yes. right? So each subcommittee seats with 17 people and nominate so yeah. it's not like everyone nominates no it's subcommittee 17 nominates so like in my case you'll find that i'm the only mtct person there so if i get elected i'm getting elected by people who are not part of the mtct okay so how, how many people are in the committees i'm saying to you are 17 parties there yes i understand but yeah. in the subcommittee or you mean the, the executive of the subcommittees yes yeah you'll have about uh, three or four depending on the needs of each subcommittee. Okay, and yeah. how many MDCT people are in the executive committees of the six committees? We've got four, but we're not the only ones. We've got four. Uh, uh, NCA also has four. Do you know what has been Chamisa's gripe with, with Pollard? He says he ran for an election that had rules, right? That's what he says. Yeah. He says, I ran for this election. I won the election. He says, after winning the election, the military set somewhere. It then concluded that I am undeserving. Then they started working out a plan of stopping the will of the people, in other words, the outcome of the election to obtain. That's his claim. Okay. So he says, then the military set, and then the military concluded on a different candidate. And then they started working out the justifications through Zek to make sure that this candidate, who's their preferred candidate, wins. That's Chamisa's claim. And we are where we are because of that. And he has since dismissed Pollard as a grouping of losers, as a grouping of people who have no agents of their own, but are simply influenced by politics of the stomach. Those, those are accusations that I've been pushing back on almost since we started as Pollard, as you know. Yes. been pushing against those. So basically, there is no one at Pollard who can sit and allow an election to go ahead. After an election has produced an outcome, and then you sit back and want to turn, as it were, the outcome of that election, especially on an individual, you can't do that, or on a single party. You can't do that because when by doing that, you're actually confirming the allegations of Chamisa, that's number one. Number two, you are actually uh, 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 adding people who are saying the legitimacy and the integrity of Pollard, who are putting it into question, you are actually helping them. And you are not helping even the calls that are saying uh, there is no legitimacy problem in Zimbabwe. Because you are simply saying, we have no respect for democratic principles and values. That's what you are saying. You do not change the rules in the middle of the game. Do you know why, as Pollard, we are against this, uh, this uh, proposed constitutional amendment that says judges don't retire, it's event, they retire 75? Because you don't get the sitting judges to benefit out of that. That's what uh, Prof. Matu says is in the Constitution. He says if those rules were to apply, they will apply to the new crop, not to this current crop. So you can't have rules that are affecting people who've already gone through a process and a great process and they've come out of that process. Okay. So like I'm saying to you... I'm this, getting you. I'm yeah. getting you. But what is Poland? Is it a commission? What, what is the status of Poland? Okay, the status of Poland really is, is derived from our constitution, which gives us the right of assembly. Okay. Yeah, the right to associate. So it's a voluntary Yes, organization. it's a voluntary organization. So you'll find that even our participation as MTCT is not cast in stone. It's subject to 
a subscription. If if you read Dr. Kupes. Uh, uh, the letter when she was commemorating the, the death of Mokenswangra, I'm sure you read it, yes. right? She says, she speaks of Poland, and then she says, our participation is anchored on the universal. That's very important, because the, the challenge we have as the media is you don't you don't take her word serious, but she, she really thinks around these things. She says it's anchored on the universal, fundamental, democratic values, principles, and ethos. Very, very important. Right. Is there a constitution? No, 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 not that I know of. Not okay. that I know of. That's, so why, that's why she's going to that. That's why she's going to that. But there are objectives of Poland, which which you can actually have got the country's constitution here. You can actually see that they're almost in mirror because they are talking of uniting people. Uh, they are talking of development of the country, improving the economic conditions of our people. They speak of uh, faith in, in public institutions. Those are the objectives of Poland. Now, to build faith, in public institutions and democracy, you need to be able to say when a democratic process has taken place, you can't reverse it. Who does the plenary report to? Who is at the top? No, there isn't anyone necessarily at the top above plenary as far as I, I understand because you've got the core conveners. Uh, unfortunate, I think those matters were discussed in this in this past plenary, so I haven't heard the, the details maybe to find out if if this information I'm giving you is not accurate as per the last plenary, you know. But probably if there's anyone above plenary, it will be the conveners, you know. But if if that's not the case, then the, the plenary will be the, the final highest uh, uh, making point. But I want you to understand something. Do not undermine the reason why there's a gathering of Pollard. The reason why Pollard is gathered, it's, Pollard is saying, okay, We've had elections, they are gone, they are passed, the country is beset by, by challenges, let's come together, let's see how we can help. That's basically what we're doing, we're just coming together to see how we can help. Whereas Chamisa is saying we cannot move forward before addressing the legitimate issues of the 2018 elections. Yeah, but we as Pollard are saying they are not founded. You see, that's why we're saying they are not founded. That's why I'm saying there is no one in Poland who can act that recklessly, you know. In other words, by saying we have an election, we have an outcome, then we are going to undermine that outcome. Because then once you do that, you then confirm, you then confirm these unfounded allegations by Chamisa that this is a, a bunch of people who do not believe in democracy, who do not believe in elections, they believe in a, a certain a group of elite who sits and then and then impose a certain outcome on people. So you can't allow that. So basically I'm saying to you, what Chamisa is saying is not founded. And by the way, the country will do itself a favor to rally behind Poland. You know why? Because this whole Chamisa, it talks are not going to happen. George Charamba has just said that. But you didn't even need George Charamba to say that. We've been telling you that from last year. I've been telling you that. The president himself on the 22nd, he made it clear that when he met with President Mbeg, he made it clear that I have a platform called Poland. I am not about to address any other political matters outside Poland. But in your committees, there's no political committee. What do you mean there's no political committee? There's no committee, from what you've just said now, that deals with political issues. No, but we're a political gathering. Right? What I'm saying, we're a political gathering. Because remember, politics is not uh, standing there in abstract. Issues of um, legisl legislative agenda and governance agenda, they are political in nature. Issues of national building and national healing, they are political in nature, right? Okay. Issues of the economy, they are political in nature. So I know where your question is going. Your question is saying, but there is no a, a, a subcommittee that deals with the issue of legitimacy. Indeed, we can't deal with legitimacy because from our view, there is no legitimacy crisis. Election came, uh, the, 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 there was a dispute, the matters were litigated in the right platform. We are not the platform to litigate that. So there's no need for reforms? No, no, who said that? How no, I'm, I'm asking you, because remember, reforms is one of the political issues. Yes, but the Media legislative... Reforms, thank you. Economic reforms. Thank you, I'll come to that. Yes. The legislative agenda and the governance agenda, it deals with the issues of reform. Okay, who is in that committee? It, it, it's chaired by Prof. Matu. Okay, but yes, Duke, someone always say that he's got no problem with the current situation. Yeah, but you see, you, you need to put things into context. I mean, you, the problem with you, uh, the media guys, is you want 
you, you become so sophisticated uh, on certain topics and then you become shallow on certain topics. Prof. Matugu has no challenge with the with the current situation as far as the legitimate question is concerned. He's got no challenges there. He's clear. He's clear. But if he had no challenges, remember what his committee said, and by the way, plenary has already adopted that. He said they are rejecting all the constitutional amendments, uh, uh, the proposed constitutional amendments. They've rejected that. So you, you, you can't be that simplistic and say he said he's got no problem. Okay. Yes, he's got no problem as far as the right. constant that, legitimate good, question is concerned. To start. Yes. Pollard has rejected yeah. the current constitutional the pro amendments. The proposed. What are they going to do next? We are busy with our own, as it were, constitutional amendments that we want, that we are saying follow this. And they also include electoral reforms. But who, who do you discuss with? Sorry? Who did you discuss this with? The amendments? No, we're discussing amongst ourselves as Pollard. We're discussing amongst ourselves as Pollard. But remember, we are, we are a grouping of politicians that have decided to say just as much as um, MTCA. Remember, MT, but it doesn't mean that MTCA is constitutional and we're not constitutional. We're both constitutional in the same sense, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that. They're a grouping of, of people who've got certain ideologies and whatever, and they derive that grouping from the constitution, the, the, the same clause which we derive, which is the right to assemble, really, and the right to associate and disassociate. That is it. Okay. The, so the, when, so sorry, let, let me come to this. So when I think it's Jafet Moyo from ZCT, is it him? So when he says we're unconstitutional, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't think he understands. No, really, he, he misses the, the point altogether. I don't understand what he's talking about. He says we're unconstitutional. Because we have a right in the, the right from the constitution to assemble. We have a right to associate, right? When it comes up with, uh, we're not an act of parliament and whatever, he's a bit slow, he's behind. The interview I gave, I think, site in December, I did say, my views, I would like us to be regulated, maybe through an act of parliament or, or statutory instrument. But uh, we, we come to different conclusions why we, we want that to happen. Like in my case, I want that to happen uh, because unfortunate for him because he doesn't realize he simply says we're duplicating work because if that happens then we'll have power maybe to subpoena people depending on what powers they're going to give us because right now really we can't subpoena anyone and the things we're saying are not binding they can be taken or not taken right that's why you found a certain minister being able to say no those people uh, they can they can say whatever they're saying but they must know that they're not arm of the government you know so it's, it's all those things he seems to have a problem with us duplicating we're not duplicating anyone's work right now you're a media house when I, right now. Are you duplicating ZPC? Are you duplicating daily news? Are you duplicating news day? You're not. You're busy uh, fulfilling what you think is your country duty, what you think is your service to the country. Allow us also to fulfill what we see as a service to the country. Now, media reforms. You know, <laughs> we're big, by the way, Poland and even myself, I'm very, very big on, on media reform. But look at the Linda story we're dealing with. That's the media, right? Erroneous conclusion. Erroneous conclusion. I mean, given on the set of facts there, then they come up to an erroneous conclusion. So many media houses, you sit there, even the one when they said we wanted all terrain, road, whatever it is. Erroneous conclusion again. Now, can you imagine a news day given a TV and a radio license? with all this uh, malicious uh, disinformation campaign that they are churning out. So, I, I, honestly speaking, I, 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 find, I find it difficult to push for media freedom in the context of Zimbabwe. I am pushing for media freedoms, but, uh, sorry, reforms, but I want you guys to reform. Okay. As much as I want the government to reform. So because you, it, you it, don't see it a problem with help. ZBC right now only covering ZANU-PF Herald, all that. No, I, I, now let me tell you with ZPC. Leading up to the election, ZPC covered everyone. It covered everyone, even independent uh, uh, candidates were covered by ZPC. Now, I'm not carrying the flag for ZPC. I think there are problems. There's room for improvement, yes. But you can't compare ZPC with you guys. I mean, I'm only getting the chance now with you almost uh, one and a half years after the election. We couldn't get a chance with any private media. You guys were working for the audience of one, and we know who that person is. Well, for now, we won't mention him because there's an obsession, you see. But we, the private media is the one that really needs reform, honestly. Okay.
Right, let's go to the question of money. Okay. Did the International Engagement Committee request four to, four to, to five million to travel around into international capitals? No, the, there was no request. By the way, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, that was a badly done hit job. Okay. It was a badly done hit job. Uh, again, speaking to the coalition that I'm talking to you about of politicians and the media and whatsoever. The lady who wrote that story has my contacts. Uh, we used to speak often before she published that story. Yeah. She did a 15 questions interview with me. Yes. Which she had promised to publish that very same Friday when she did that, uh, that story. She didn't publish. And I asked her, how come my interview is not there when you seem to be uh, uh, in desperation for it? She, she then gave me a story that we ended up doing the prime minister of the former prime minister of Australia. Yours is coming next week, referring to this past Friday. It didn't come out. I'm willing to give you the interview, by the way, so that okay. you see what the media doesn't want you to see. Right. So she doesn't do that. And then I ask her, but you've written something here without even talking to me, which is not factual, which is not truthful. She says, I'll give you a chance next Friday. We're referring to this very same past Friday. There is no chance that I was given. So it's clear to us it was a hit job. And you must realize who they are fronting. They, they always put the face of Dr. Cooper with all these controversies. So, so it's clear to us, it's still that malicious campaign against the person of Dr. Kupe. Uh, every time there's something bad, you need to associate with her. And this is what Prof said, by the way, when I did um, an interview, a press, press conference with him. He said, those who are asking about money, they must go to parliament, especially you journalists, you must be able to ask certain MPs to ask uh, Prof Nube or or the minister and the presidency or whatever, ask them a direct question because Pollard is, is funded by OPC, Office of President and Cabinet, to say, how much money have you spent on Pollard? That's what uh, Prof. Matuku said. One of the complaints is that Dr. Kope and probably MDCT as a whole, okay. you've been dominating yeah. Pollard. Yeah. It's almost as if now Pollard is MDCT. All right. Look, I think I've already debunked that for you. I've said to you, let me give you the positions as per the election outcome. Right? Yes. I want to give you the positions as per the election outcome. MTCT has got two chairpersons. It's got a spokesperson. Okay. And then it's got a deputy chair. Yes. This is as per the election outcome. Out of six committees. Out of six committees. Right. right. So it's got two chair it's got two chairpersons. It's got a spokesperson. It's got a deputy chair. Yes. Right. NCA as per the outcome of elections, has got two chairpersons okay. and two rapporteurs. Right. So you can't call that domination. Now, I, I've, I've done two press conferences. Right? I've done two press conferences. The first one I did it with Prof. Matu. As a result of or we've, as a result of that, I think the whole week it was Prof. Matu in the paper. We did the last uh, press conference, when was that? I think Thursday or where? Yeah. yeah we, we did that. And Prof. Matu was part of the of the, of the panel. He's been dominating the, the media space. But I don't see it as NCA dominating. I don't see it like that. I see Pollard getting a good coverage. But that, that's what my work has been all about. Because at that level, you're not looking at people according to their political parties. You are looking at people according to how much they are contributing to Poland. So, uh, basically, what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, those complaints, if indeed they're there, they're unfounded. Okay. They don't make sense. So, uh, tell me, what is the purpose of Poland? Is it to move the country forward, to make things better for the elections, to engage to change laws, to improve the economy. What is it? Yeah, but you are breaking these things down as if it's a binary, that if you're doing this, you can't do this. You see, uh, it's a zero-sum game. Yeah, I think that that's, the right, that's the right concept. It's not a zero-sum game, right? I've just articulated to you that there was an impasse after the elections, right? And it was clear to us, and when the government said, Yes, we are willing to talk. Let's have this platform. Let's talk. 
let's see. And this is what the president says. I'm quoting him on his speech on the 22nd at his farm. He says, we want to take these progressive ideas of Pollard and try and juxtapose them with our policies and see how Pollard can enhance our policies. That's what the president says. Now, some of you then wake up and say, no, but uh, yeah, this government, the economy collapsed and whatsoever. And you want Paula to deal with that, you are very slow. Because the president of Zanu PF and the president of the country has already said he finds no value, still on the 22nd of December 2019, he finds no value in discussing uh, the economy collapse under Zanu. He says that's common cause, that's common knowledge. But what is more interested is in going forward as a country, what can we do? And this is where Pollard comes in. Pollard says, okay, fine, uh, you are ruling, we want to give you our ideas, right? Uh, these are ideas, and we are giving those ideas publicly. Shamisa says, I have the solution, but I'm not going to give you the solution. I'll wait until I win. It's fine. He's got a right to do so. It's fine. We will okay. wait until whenever he wins. All right. So, Tabombek. Yes. Did he meet Pollard when he came to Zimbabwe? He met, and, and I'm going this again, I think, for the second time or third time with you. Uh, President Mbegi did meet, okay, we met us as MTCT, right? He also met uh, other members who are of Pollard. So basically we came, we went together as a group, but it wasn't necessarily meeting a, a, a Pollard members, but it was it was good for us that when he met us, he met us together with other members of, of Pollard. But you, you can't say we were there on a Pollard mandate. No, it would be it would be dishonest of us to say that. Okay, but he's coming again now. Yeah. I saw a statement from Pollard that he's coming again in a week or two. Uh, that look, if there is a statement from Pollard to that effect, I would have issued that statement. Yes. Uh, look, I don't know who would have issued that statement. I am not favored with that information. It's in the Herald today, if you look yeah. at the Sunday so Mail of today. No, no, I can't speak to it. Mm. What I do know is that the Pollard International Relations and Re-Engagement, uh, amongst the strips of going around the region, engaging, um, engaging the region, they will also engage President Mbeki. Is he going to come to Zimbabwe? to meet with Pollard? I don't know. I don't know if he has to come to Zimbabwe. I don't know because, like I'm saying, the international relations is going to engage him. International relations and re-engagement team is going to engage him when they get okay. here. What are they going to engage him on? They are going to engage him on the challenges that uh, Zimbabwe is facing. He's an elder statesman. He's a former president of a big economy. Uh, he has been helpful in the past. So we show we, we are sure that there is a lot of wisdom that we can uh, gain from President Mbeki. Okay, because to to me and to many ordinary Zimbabweans, yeah, I do not understand what it is that you are engaging with these international people. When you meet the United States ambassador or the British ambassador, or you meet the EU representative in Zimbabwe, you meet Tabo Mbeki. Yeah, in what capacity are you meeting them? What is the outcome of your meeting? Okay, I, you know, I'm just, it's clear to me that you guys are always engaging with a, a preset idea or concept. You, you, you must try and empty yourself and allow yourself to think critically around these issues. I've already told you what Pollard is about and who is Pollard and what are our objectives. I've already told you and we've, we've been telling you over and over again. We have a concern about Zimbabwe and we want to see Zimbabwe move forward. When we met the, uh, the US uh, ambassador, his team uh, shot out a tweet and they told you what we discussed and they told you that they are looking forward to furthering these discussions, these engagements. And by the way, th th that sentiment is um, is enjoyed really amongst most of the West uh, uh, nations. So when we meet these diplomats, we are really saying, and I can tell you the West that imposed restrictive measures, we are simply saying, look, we're engaging the government. Because remember, Pollard is not engaging external players. We are also engaging the government. So we're saying we're engaging the government. We're engaging them on AEPCD. You know, like the agenda, the, the, the constitutional um, agenda, legislative agenda and the governance agenda commit. There are these reforms that we want from the economy side. There are these reforms that we want from an economic point of view. You know, the, you know so, so we're engaging the government on that. So we, 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 we're engaging with, them, with these uh, foreign missions in the country and telling them this is what we're doing as far as engaging the government. And on your side, 
what will it take you to move, especially on the issue of restrictive measures? And they share with us, you know, and, and, and that's basically our role. That's what we're doing. And, but uh, to, to your question, getting outside the country and, and talking on, on, on behalf, we're not talking on behalf of Poland, because Poland is not a political party that's going to contest elections. No, we're talking on behalf of Zimbabweans on the sanctions issue. You know, you are a media player. You know how much your, your industry is limited in Zimbabwe. You, you guys can't even, can't even compete with other uh, 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 regional players in the, in the media space. Because those sanctions are so restrictive that no international media player really wants to invest in Zimbabwe. And if they don't invest, you know what that does? It affects even technology transfer, skills transfer. It, 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 there's a negative impact on all of that. So we're going out there to say, please reconsider these things so that we can have the much needed foreign direct investment, which has a lot of trickle down effects, really, as I've already spoken skills transfer, technology transfer. Even our technicons will be better because they must keep up with what is the current uh, uh, industry needs and, and trends. Okay. How come there's no military reforms committee? or Security Sector Reform Committee in Poland? No, but that legislative and uh, governance uh, agenda subcommittee, it deals with all of those things. Because remember the military and the security that you're talking about, they are creatures of the Constitution. They are creatures of the Constitution. They are not uh, creatures of a uh, human making or somebody's making. No, they are creatures of the Constitution. So we're looking into the Constitution and see how they should be set up. But let me ask them to say this to you. Uh, Prof. Matugu may not have won the elections, right? And uh, a certain person may have, amongst the opposition, got uh, more numbers than Prof. Matu. But one thing I can tell you without a shadow of doubt and fear of contradiction or whatever is that there is no one in Zimbabwe right now on constitutional matters superior to Prof. Matu. No one. But this is not a constitutional matter. It's a political matter. That's why you are political players. So when Chamisa is saying you are a choir, that's what is Chamisa is saying. You agree on everything. Is that not correct? Yeah, look, I, you might be excited by the direct terms he, he wants to call us, but uh, just based on this interview only, by the way, I've already shown you that we are not what he's claiming we are, because we have already rejected the proposed constitutional amendments. We've already rejected that. And I, I, I'm really lost. You have to educate me when you're saying, no, it's not a constitutional matter, it's a political matter. I mean, the politics of Zimbabwe is governed by the constitution. So to the extent that if the constitution is faulty in that it allows wrong politics, we have to change that constitution. But our operations in the country and everything, the constitution guides how we do things. So I, 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 you'll have to educate me. Okay, let, let me explain. Yeah. In Zimbabwe, the army is involved in elections. Covertly or overtly? Covertly. They, they carry the, the ballot boxes. They are there when announcements are made. They make statements in the media. That is not a, a constitutional matter. By constitution, they're not supposed to do that. There is a political problem where the army is meddling. There are people in blade and sick who are former military. A lot of people, not one or two, lots of people working in the systems department, working in registration, delimitation. Those are some of the electoral reforms that are being looked for by the NDC of Nelson Chamisa. Have you guys raised this? Are these key issues? Or it's only the issues to do with moving forward that interest Poland? Okay. I would like you to be patient enough. Give us six months, right? Yes. We'll give you our proposed constitutional amendments. And by the way, you are giving Chamisa too much credit than he deserves, honestly, until you prove to me and say, here is their list of demands. I've not seen their list of demands. So if you can show me their list of demands. So do, do me a favor. Do not compare our input to that of his or his organization. As Pollard, judge our input as to its progressiveness or lack thereof. Right, so 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 benchmark us with the best international practice. I think that will be helpful, because once you start benchmarking us against Chamisa, you're shortchanging the country. Because honestly speaking, his output is zero to me. I mean, really, it's it's a joke. So honestly, I feel insulted. 
when you take seriously minded people like ourselves at Pollard and you benchmark us against Chamisa, it's, it's an insult. Well, this might be... I gave you a book on Pollard and our program. You agree. Even if you didn't agree, by the way, I'm getting reviews from international well-respected people. And they're saying, this is great work. Because that's, that's the book we're using for engaging international, remember. So okay. that book has been subjected to well-refined people, thought leaders. And, and so, so really to then subject us to, 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 to or rather benchmarking us, like, no, no, it's, 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 it's an insult, it's an affront. Don't you feel that Poland is going to end up becoming almost a white elephant? No one will, will know where to place Poland because you do not have a specific mandate from anyone. To no, do what you're doing. No, I don't know when you're saying we don't have a specific mandate uh, from anyone. Let me give you an example. Are you aware that, and in the case of the MTCA, and, and uh, because it's the one that keeps dismissing us as Pollard and saying they have a mandate, you are stretching the electoral outcome too far, guys, to areas that it was not intended for. Let me help you. That election was intended to determine who becomes the executive of the country as far as the presidential elections were concerned right there was also the parliamentary election which was meant to determine who becomes a member of parliament from which constituency and whatever that's as far as that election went right then there was the local government election which determines who becomes a councillor of a certain one that's as far as it went now to then stretch that as a mandate to do negotiations, to do the economy, to do this and this, no, it's stretching it too far. You you are you are overreaching. You are overreaching. You are you are you are, you are exaggerating the, 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 the what the outcome of that election meant. But yourself, yes, you've got such a big important part in Poland. Dr. Kope, she's got such a when big you're saying important... yourself, you, you mean like the yourself, city, your, yourself, or myself? Uh, yes. Okay. As Dr. Pukin. Kope, yes, she's got a yeah. big important role in, in, in Poland. Okay. Doctor Mad uh, Professor Maduku, yes, very important part. Yes. None of you guys mm. represent anyone. What do you mean? I don't represent anyone. Who do you represent? I represent the people of Zimbabwe. But I've. Oh, but how? My, my, what do you mean how? How do you represent the people? No, that's what I'm asking. What do you mean how? Because here, I've got the constitution of the country here, right? This is the constitution of the country. It gives you, it gives you here, national objectives. It tells me what are national objectives. And this is what I'm pushing. Now, you can't then say, because what standard are you using to say I don't be, uh, represent anyone? What standards are you using? So you're you defaulting back to, to that election, which was not meant for that, by the way. That election did not say... Because you did not win as an MP, then therefore you have no role in representing the interest of Zimbabwe in any matter. That's okay. what, what that election said. You are going said. to go to uh, no, no, no. a country. No, no, please engage with this what I've just said to you. No, I, I'm engaging with that. No, I'm no, saying... you are not answering me. I'm saying to you, how do you disqualify me? For, because th this constitution was voted for by over 80% of our people. And these are the objectives that I'm pushing. But, but the constitution sets up proper structures. For what? Judiciary. Parliament, the executive, it sets up those structures. And you guys are not in any of those. Yeah, but listen, we are not in any way or shape interfering with those structures. We are just playing our civil duty. I just gave you an example. Who, who are you interfering with when right now in what you are doing? I'm in the private sector. I don't have any government office of the president funding coming to me. Oh, okay, lovely, lovely. Now, I'm happy now. Let's, yeah. let's have a mature conversation around these issues. If we are unduly receiving government funding, you know what that is? That is a policy matter. Okay. No, no, no. There's a, there, there's a point. There's a point that I want you to appreciate. If for some reason the president is using this money, the ultra virus, there are mechanisms to hold the president to account. You don't come to me and say to me, you are using, no, I'm not using government money, right? That's what I'm saying to you, it's a policy matter. So what then Zimbabweans will have to do, they'll have to say, President, you used so much millions on this project called Pollard. And you are not supposed to use uh, our money on this project. We don't see value in this. Therefore, we're going to punish you and not voting for you.
That's a policy dispute. It's not a legal matter. It's a policy dispute. And do you know who is the adjudicator of that? It's the electorate. It's the, the electorate is best placed to deal with this matter. It's not you guys. We are really jumping all over. Let me give you an example. The MTCA, uh, and according to them, right? Not even us. According to them, their treasurer general says, we are missing 2 million. That's what the treasurer general says. says we are missing 2 million. We have appointed an auditor. And you know where that 2 million is coming from? It's coming from you and me. That's public money. Just like what you're complaining about, Pollard. It's public money which is missing. Okay. And you guys and you guys are silent about it. Well, I was and one yet, of the most vocal people. And, and, yet you, and yet you want to talk about uh, 4.5 million about Dr. Coupe, Pollard. That is not there. It's not there. That's rapid. There's no story okay. there. So you don't get a sitting allowance when you go and stay at Blawayo. Your hotel no. is not paid for. No. I, I, well, no, that's not... When you... Wait. Are you saying to me... Me sitting in a hotel working for Pollard, that's an allowance. How is that an allowance to me? Okay, who pays for the room? I think I think I think I think one of these days maybe we must agree to come and shadow me for the whole week at my house. Then you'll appreciate why those things mean nothing to me. My pet is bigger. The food I eat is completely different from the one at the hotel. You know I'm on a special diet. I'm a plant eater. I don't eat oils. I don't eat all of those things that you see in that hotel. I strike you when I'm there. So 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 maybe for other people, I don't enjoy when I'm out of my house be it food, be it the sleeping experience or whatsoever. So, yeah, please. That's not they, a, they don't pay you for, that's not an allowance for, for, for me. A, a daily allowance no. for being in Poland. No. They don't pay the petrol that you use for going to Poland. No, of course they must because why, why am I using my fuel on, 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 on a country's errand? Because what I'm doing really is civil duty. But no one appointed you guys. You, you just... No one needs to appoint me. Like I'm saying to you, if you were sitting here and saying... I went and demanded money. I didn't demand any money. The president who, who is elected, who is duly elected, says, I need you guys to assist me. And I will fund you as you're assisting me. In terms, in other words, I will fund you your travel. I'll fund you your sleeping. I don't have a, 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 a Polat laptop, by the way. I don't have a Polat phone. I don't have Polat, not even data or anything. No. Everything I use for Polat is mine. And the 17 other people. Sorry. Yes. No. no well, as far as I know, right, I can I can speak uh, conclusively on the subcommittee that I'm under. I, I, I know we don't receive anything or we haven't received nothing. I have not received anything. Okay. Yeah. But when, when, when you... Ah, but I have a problem now. Yeah. I spoke to you about the two million... We've raised that on this platform. No, no, so no, 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 yes. because you're clashing, you're, you're clashing at straws here. You want now to say to me, uh, you, you want to attach value in sleeping at a hotel. And I'm saying to you, you probably need to see the state of the Zimbabwean hotels and then, and then see where I stay. And then you can then make that comparison. By now, you know I'm well-traveled, by the way. Not on Poland. Poland has not taken me outside Zimbabwe. But I'm well-traveled on my own on proper hotels right no disrespect but the the the, the world class the the, the 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 west is is seriously developed compared to zimbabwe so again that's another insult when you say to me i'm enjoying no i'm not enjoying well this is how this is coming out you see in the media this week this was a very big story it is making pollard look like an opportunity for people who would not have had an opportunity Especially the other people, MDCT is even better because they had some votes. You had 48,000 votes. The other people there who had not even 5,000 votes. But I'm saying to you, first of all, the media in Zimbabwe is discredited. Right? So you don't have to go far. Look at me. I've been to one of the world's most advanced capitals. And there are hotels. And all these things you are trying to attach value to. And I'm saying to you, Everything I use now, be it phone, be it laptop, be it whatsoever, is mine. So what is it that I'm getting from Paula that I would have otherwise would have not got? Just tell me. Even the publicity we are trying to, well, whatever those claims were. I was already popular thanks to a platform uh, to a certain extent also. But even my writings, the media, so many people, they would like to meet you. We know him from his writing. So... I'm not sure what is it that I'm supposedly getting through the public public pace. 
which which I didn't have. As a matter of fact, it limits me. Because as you yeah. see, before, during this interview, I would have been talking a lot of MTCT, I'll be talking Dr. Kope, I'll be talking Chief Love, I'll be talking about Nico Pep, but I can't now, I'm so restricted to speak matters poorly. So if anything, it's restricting, it's not liberating. Reality, yeah. eh? I'm dealing with reality. Eh? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. The concern that I have is many people see Poland as an attempt to neutralize the request by the MDC Alliance for dialogue. And then what, what is happening <coughs> here is that basically they let you do these things that are not really making any difference. For example, who was representing ZANU PF in, in, in Bulawayo? Okay. Um, by the way, there is nothing that is stopping uh, Chamisa from speaking to E.D. Uh, as long as him and E.D. agree on, on speaking, you know. Remember what the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? So, now the fact that he has failed to agree with E.T., he can't say, you guys stop talking to E.T. so that E.T. can agree to talk with me. It doesn't, it doesn't follow. I mean, that logic is flawed, by the way. So, Pollard has not stopped E.T. from having conversations with people he wants to. He said, Conver just last week, Friday, you know he was in Bulawa meeting uh, the Matepele and the coalition. Yes. No, yes. no, no, I don't think it's sinking. He, he did not say, I'm talking to Pollard, come to Pollard. He didn't say that. So basically, E.T. speaks to those that he wants to speak to. He has pinned himself in a corner and is now using Pollard as a scapegoat. E.T. makes a large group of people, I think leading up to the Christmas holidays, he was also in Bulawayo, I think he was meeting as a traditional or church groupings or whatever. He meets different groupings. And I hate because there is George Haramba, there is Nika, I shouldn't be doing this, I really shouldn't be talking on, on behalf of E.T. But it's just to impeach your accusation. It's really to say it has got no basis whatsoever. It meets any grouping or any person. Okay. It has nothing to do with Poland. But Chamisa yeah. has said this month three times. Okay. The Tedabit has said this week. So the, that so, they, so, uh, that ED is refusing to talk to him. They have written him. They have called him. Yeah. They have tried everything. But yeah. he's and he said he's going to go and consult. But he never came back. Now let me tell you something. If I was E.T. also, I will, I will avoid him like a plague. You know, a leper in the back. I'll avoid him. He comes to South Africa. Uh, first of all, to embarrass us as a people, you saw J.J. laugh at him in that Newsroom Africa interview. You saw basically laugh at him, put his hands in the in his head and really laugh at him. I mean, after the hard talk, people say, I thought they would prepare him better for these engagements, but um, he's thought completely out of depth. He, he, he really, his parents were lost. He really, he couldn't, he couldn't grapple with what was being asked of him, what was expected of him. So on that score, that's a national embarrassment. So, so as a president, really, I'll be like, look at, look at this embarrassment. Number two, he comes here, he says it is unlovable and all those things. I mean, for me, that's not a conducive lead up to a discussion with anyone. No, you're not yeah. going to be insulting me. Wait, wait, that. wait. You're not going to be insulting me and then expecting me to engage with you. I have the right, constitutional, right? Right? I've got the right to associate and not associate. I, I really, I, I, I choose my friends. But you're agreeing that ED is refusing to talk to Chamisa. My friend, I don't speak uh, for ED. No, no, it's been said by Chamisa. Yeah. I, don't speak. No, no, no. For, but, we are speaking uh, for Chamisa. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you I don't want to speak for Chamisa, by the way. I mean, he changes positions every other two days, really. So I, I don't want to speak for him. Because remember, a few days ago, he was claiming that he is actually the president. It is in opposition. So honestly speaking, I don't understand why the president would want to speak to someone in opposition that desperate. So I, I don't want to speak for him. But I'm saying to you, if I was E.T., I would also want to speak to him. I mean, look at his behavior. Okay, what about Tabombeki? Tabombeki has failed... To get a response from ED? No. According to who? According to Chamisa. Yeah, but you, you speak of this Chamisa as if he's some angel, you know, some unfallen angel, right? He might be an angel, but definitely not the unfallen one. Okay, according because to Because no, Arama. no, wait, 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 wait. Chamisa said he met Donald Trump and Donald Trump promised him 15 billion. Didn't he say that? Okay, he said on a rally. 
No, no, no. He didn't say that. It's a rally, yes. Was it true or false? Well, it was false. It was rejected by the United States ambassador in Zimbabwe. So, so it was false. It was false. But, All right. No, no. Yes. Because I want to I want to call on his claims because I want to show you how much of a liar this young man is. Right? Because I want I really want to list claims Are for you. Are you saying you. that so Chamisa came, has, has came back to Italy? No, I'm saying to you, you can't use Chamisa as a standard and say to me, this is what Chamisa has said. Okay, and George Charamba. What I can tell you today. Yes, George Charamba simply said there will be no... Uh, Chamisa, it is, it is, so it is talks, and he said to you this whole thing that um, um, Peg, uh, let me help you by the way. News flash, you can you can break with this. This could be your headline. By the way, when Peggy came to Zimbabwe for the first time in this in this era, which yes. was last year, he had not come for E.T. Chamisa's talks, and I should know. Huh? Okay, why because of my from? no, but it will be up to Beg to declassify that to President Beg. So it will be up to President Beg to declassify why he came to Zimbabwe. But I know. From my position as a spokesperson of Pollard. at least two, no, 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 not Pollard, because I was not Pollard spokesperson at the time. Mm -hmm. As a spokesperson of Dr. Kupe and MTCT at the time, that is not the reason why President Mbeki came to Zimbabwe. Okay, but then he gave a press conference and said he's going to stay for an extra day. Yes. Because he talked to Chamisa and he talked to Idi, and there were some proper. Uh, discussions there which would want an extra day well I, to, to the extent that you want me to comment on those comments i am not going to comment because i didn't hear him i'll tell you the comments i heard him speak he said when there's a dispute an electoral dispute in this case we take it to the courts and once the courts come up with a determination it, it remains it, it remains final really that's what i heard him say so I, I, I will restrict my, 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 my comments to that. To the extent that you want me to, to, to speak further than that, I can't because I didn't hear him say that. But do you think it makes sense to have Chamisa and Idi not talking? Uh, it's neither here nor there for me. Like I've already told you, if somebody is going to be insulting me with every opportunity that he gets and does not show any respect, let me give you an example. It is older than my father, eh? yes. I think by a year or two. My, my own father. Yes. Yeah. So he's, he's older than him, I think, by a year or two. I can never, for the life of me, call him brother Edi. I can never. If I can't call him father, at least I'll call him a, a cool. You understand? He goes around calling him Koma, Koma, Koma Wangu. I mean, <laughs> and he's younger than me. Now, I'm, I'm just dealing with this from an African perspective, traditional point of view. That, for me, I just can't understand that. Is there anything else which you didn't say? I'd love to go home now. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Kalipani Pugeni. Okay. You are spokesman for Poland. Yes. And you're also spoke, spokesman for Dr. Tokuzani Kupi of the MDCT. Yes. Are we going to see you in government? Ah, no, 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 no. You will no, never I, take a government I, I, position. I, no, you can't say I would never, as, I mean, because remember I'm still in politics, but uh, no, it's, it's not something in, of, of my interest. You and me had an informal discussion before this thing, and, and you, were, you, were, you were amazed and impressed by some of the work we're doing outside politics and whatever. So basically, you know by now that I have no financial incentive to be involved in politics or government or whatsoever. Finance, my, my financial activities has nothing to do with politics, and I think I'm fine. You, you, you have seen that. So, no, I, I have no business. No one must accommodate me in government. I, sh I shouldn't push any chance so that I'm in government. I don't need to be in government. Right now, that's my contribution to Zimbabwe. I think I told you again on the other interview that come 2023 if there's such an impasse and there's polar i'm not going to be part of it i'm tired i've played my role that's it thank you right thank you very much mr kalpani pugeni yeah. i hope to see you again very very soon yeah so that we can completely make people understand poland thank yeah. you very much sir oh, thank you thank Bye. you okay <laughs>